Last time you were on, you were very vocal and had great opinions about yeah. you. You uh, thought Le'Veon Bell was doing the right thing. I, I said, you know, you're betting on yourself. He's lost this bet, you know, because James well, Conner is. How did he lose the bet? Because he's not getting paid, and James Conner has, you know, they don't miss him. James Conner is having a better year than Le'Veon Bell had last this year. Was, this, was, this, was, this was, first of all, this was never about James Conner having a better year than Le'Veon Bell. That, that, this was never the situation. The, the whole reason he's not there is to preserve his body. Yeah, but now, the Steelers, it, it, no, the, the, the Steelers were betting not, on James Conner. But it's not about – see, that's, that's, I think that's where everything is misconstrued. It wasn't – this has never been about James Conner or the Steelers. This is about Le'Veon preserving his body because if you go out – how many touches have James Conner – has James Conner had over the, through, throughout the course of the season? Can we – I know you have researchers there. Can they look it up? Catches and carries. I think he's close to two or 300 or 200 right now, and it's halfway through the year. He's got 150, right or wrong? 151 carries. And he's got okay, and how many 30, catches? 38 catches. So that's a hundred. That's a hundred and eighty. So you times that by two. That's three hundred and sixty, right? Three hundred and sixty touches where you're getting hit on every one of those. Okay. That's that's what that's what Le'Veon Bell was saying. Like I'm not going to let you go out here and put four hundred carries on me, four hundred touches on me again. And so this was never. This has never been an argument like where I think we 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 see this a lot where it's like the players are fighting for money. Le'Veon's not fighting for money. He's fighting for to preserve his body. And so that's why he said, I'm not going to show up. And I wrote an article uh, for NFL.com, and everyone should go out and look at it. It was in week one about what I, what I felt Le'Veon should do in this situation because this is not an argument over, over cash. This is an argument over preserving his body. And so we all see it as James Conner's doing well. Le'Veon's been texting James Conner every week. Telling him great job because it's, it, this this had nothing to do with him. Well, then why really had to do with the amount? Go ahead. Why would Le'Veon Bell come back at all then? Well, he, he has to come back to get the accredited season. He yeah. has to come back to get the accredited season to then get transition tagged. Now, once you get transition tagged, you can go out there and negotiate with any team you want to and get a deal done, and then Pittsburgh has to match it. Now, with the, with the way James Conner is playing. Right, because it's a win-win for everybody. With the way James Conner is playing, do you think Pittsburgh will match a forty million dollar deal for Le'Veon Bell? No. Okay, exactly. So Le'Veon then gets what he wants, gets to play for a team, and then guess what? what? Pittsburgh gets James Conner, who's been playing well. Very, both sides win. It's good to go. You know, both sides can win in this situation. But do you so, think the teams are going to? They want Le'Veon Bell. That, that you uh, know, a guy who yeah, doesn't want to play, a guy, why? a guy who doesn't want. So what happens in the last exactly. year of your contract? Yeah, it's, 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 it's not that he doesn't want to play. He wants to play, but he had to make a business decision to preserve his body. OK, but then I get to the last and year of his deal with the next team, Mojo, and then he's going to pull the same thing. But, not really. I, I think if, if you're going to use that, that argument, the slippery slope argument, then I think that's a, a horrible argument. I, I think. If he's 27 now, you sign him to a deal, he knows by the time he's 32, 31, that he, that he has to go out there and show that he's, he can run at that age. Very simple. I mean, that, that it has nothing to do with it. you got to remember, at running backs, ages play into all these different things. Yeah. And so uh, that, that's all it is. This is literally – he's in his prime of his career, and I'm going to tell you why teams are going to sign him. Because when you hear about Todd Gurley, you talk about the top running backs, everyone says, yeah, but Le'Veon's not playing. Which means what? That you still have that thought in your mind that Le'Veon is still one of the top backs in the league when he's on the field. So, as the next team, you get Le'Veon to come in, okay, after, after he – now he's going to play when he comes in the, to camp when, uh, before this deadline, or when he comes to the team before this deadline, he's going to play some. And when he plays some – you're going to see if he's still the same old Le'Veon. Yeah, but am I allowed to load him up, though? Mojo, am I allowed to load him up with touches here, or is he going to go, hey, you got to you're put allowed him... To do, you're, you're, no, you're, you're allowed to do whatever you want once he gets in the building, but six weeks of carries versus uh, 16 weeks of carries, I think teams would appreciate that a little bit more. Right or, right or wrong? Uh, we're, we'll, we'll disagree on it. You, you see it from a running back. I got to come on the show. I got to come, I got to come on the show. I see it from, I see it from a player's perspective, yeah, not I, a team's perspective. I understand the team side. I understand the team side. Oh, Tag I, him, but I understand. Year, I, another year production. I understand Le'Veon Bell's perspective here on it. I, absolutely. I, I get where he would do it. It's, you know, I liken it to CC Sabathia in his last year in Milwaukee. It felt like they pitched him every other day. 
because they knew they weren't going to re-sign him, and then he goes to the Yankees. I understand that. And, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. I just think Le'Veon Bell, so, how, how's he going to get that money back that he's he's lost $8 million? You know what? In, in $8 million sounds a lot to a lot of people who don't make that type of money, which is fine. He can get that money back, but what he can do is preserve his body to make the $40 million. So would you ever sacrifice $8 million to make 40 You're going to make $40 million. Everyone would say yes. Not if, not if you not if he played the Dan, if he got four hundred touches three years back to back to back, do you think someone some other team is gonna pay him forty million dollars after having twelve hundred carries in three years? It depends on how productive I don't he is. Think so. All right. well, I think teams will come in and say, Well, you know, he's had this many carries this many times from the business side and that and that and, that, and that's an issue. So I, if it's up to me and you know, I think I, I personally feel and I'm, I have to answer your question about Mike Thomas, too, after this, before we go. I personally feel that Le'Veon made a decision. He stuck with that decision where most players don't stick with it. I was a player that didn't stick with that decision. Um, and so he's ridden this thing out to the point where he's given himself the, the best chance to maximize his earning potential in the future. Mm-hmm. That's, all he, that's all you can do I, in this situation. I, I know. I because got it. Football is 100 I know. Right, because football is a hundred percent injury sport, so you have to be able to try to maximize your potential. He's done that, I know. and so we can't. Everyone keeps saying like James Conner has done this, and granted, I'm going to say this with all respect to James Conner and everything that he's done. He's done a phenomenal job. But when teams will come into Pittsburgh, they don't say we're trying to stop James Conner like they do Le'Veon Bell. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on Directv or download the Dan Patrick Show app.